This is Genatsa Tayer, a toast to Armenia with Jano Kabinjian. A comprehensive look at the Armenian culture only on the Ignotainment Media Network. Genatsa, Genatsa Tayer, Pai Luisin Spesek. Hey, Chris, you know what? We had that big show maybe a couple weeks back that the whole news was about. Uh, we had the activists uh, in yeah. Armenia that were protesting about the gas and so forth. Yep. Well, just the other day, Russia, check this out, my friends, Russia has legalized the reduced price for natural grass, grass, <laughs> I'm sorry, gas, yeah. gas, I'm sorry, <laughs> grass. Yeah, they should tax us on grass, yeah. too. <laughs> it uh, wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, no kidding. But Russia has legalized the reduced price for natural gas which Armenia will purchase at the border at the price of $165 per 1,000 cubic meters, which is a big drop here. And I think... Yeah, uh, that's a huge drop. Yeah, Russia confirm, confirms this, and uh, it's big news for Armenia. And uh, hopefully things are going to get a little bit better there in Armenia with the natural gas situation, especially right around the corner with winter popping up. That's great. That's a huge win. Yes, sir. Hey, Chris, what a great show we had last week. Hey, we've been having a great show every week, actually. It has been really, really string with of Sar- good shows. With Saroj, that was uh, Saroj, that was an unbelievable show. He's extremely talented guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I hope he enjoyed the show. But it doesn't stop there, my friends. we got a great show coming up here. Uh, big guest here, Armenian guest that's a uh, big-time actor here that I really like his stuff. Uh he uh he was in the Men Who Stare at Goats. Do you remember that? Movie? I do remember that movie. That was that one was of a, my that favorite was, movies. It was a really good movie. Yeah, that that one right there in the, the Kingdom. Yeah, oh, I'm very. You familiar. can't go wrong yeah. with the Kingdom. That was he was in that that one as well. Series episode with twenty four. Oh, I love twenty four. Twenty four was yeah. great. Homeland. Homeland is. I, that I, was I one of your Homeland. favorites. It, wasn't it? it is. It's one of my all time favorite shows of all time. Homeland and The Sopranos. So. Well, the list goes on and on here, my friends. We've got Harach Titizian. How are you, my friend? Hey, guys. I'm well, and how are you guys? Not bad at all. Not bad at all. And uh, we're so happy to have you on our show. Thank you for being on our show here. And uh, we got so many questions, but let's start off with the basic. Uh, did you? Uh, wh- where, are you where are you from? Are you from L.A. right now uh, when, when we're talking to you? Yeah, I'm from L.A., born and raised, uh, and, um, yeah, I grew up out here. I've never moved. <laughs> Are you first generation, second generation, or? Uh, first generation. First generation. Yeah, my, my, my father is um, from Lebanon, and my mother's from Jordan. Really? Yeah, well, you know what? I, I'm from yeah, Lebanon, too. Yeah, you are. That's what I was yeah, going to say. So is Jono. <laughs> Now, uh, growing up, uh, how did you how did you get involved in all these great stuff that you're involved in right now? I mean, uh, how did you get involved in acting? Well, you know, I was always a pretty adventurous kid, and um, you know, I, I would do like I, I would sing and do imitations and that kind of thing. So whenever we had guests at the house, my parents always kind of put me up there, you know, after dinner and like had me basically entertain them. So it was kind of always in me. And then, of course, uh, when I decided. When I was 19 years old, I decided that I wanted to be an actor, and um, my parents weren't very happy, obviously, being you know old school Armenians. Um, but uh, you know, it, it worked out. I, I kind of didn't really listen to, to them, and I I did it anyways, and um, I've been doing it since. And uh, I could I could probably see that too because uh, they want you to go to school, get that education, and be a big doctor, a lawyer, that, that type of stuff. I could see the Armenian people doing that for sure. So Yeah, of course, of course. But it's just funny how, like, the one thing that they, they push you to do when you're when you're younger and you decide you, then you want to continue doing it, all of a sudden it's, it's, it's no good. <laughs> yeah. Now, did you, uh, when you got older, did you say, you know what, maybe acting school is uh, around the corner for me as well? I mean, did you get involved in any art schools? I did. Uh, what happened was I, I took a little class uh, local that wasn't too far from me, but then um, it, it was it was a little uh, limiting. So I, I went to a place called the Beverly Hills Playhouse, 
um, for about four years from when I was like 20 until 24. Um, and that was a pretty, um, you know, uh, kind of a, it took up a lot of the time. So I was actually, I dropped out of college to go to acting classes, but I hadn't told my parents. Um, so, um, I was doing that for a while, but they finally found out and it wasn't pretty to say the least. <laughs> Are you familiar with that place, Chris? I am. Yeah, I'm very familiar with it. Yeah, I, 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 I know. I've, I know exactly where it is. Really? Yep. Really. Great. Were there other Armenians that were uh, part of this uh, establishment as well, trying to get get, get their first not, acting career going as well? Not too many. I mean, there was maybe randomly like one, and I think another one came down the road. But no, it, it was primarily not. Uh, there weren't really any Armenians. So I associated primarily with um, non-Armenians and you know I made really good friends and um, I, I kind of um, uh, involuntarily distanced myself from the Armenian community because what I was what I was putting all my time into uh, I didn't really have access yeah you know what it, I mean? and plus the Armenian community you know they're, they're like you know what we're not familiar with what he's doing <laughs> I mean really you're doing this something that uh, they're not really familiar with so you're taking on a, a kind of like a left turn on this uh wh- do you think that it's it's harder for Armenians to get something like this uh going in the, in their life and their future and so forth uh, to to find movie scripts and so forth like that I mean it, are there agencies for Armenians out there um I don't think there are any agencies specifically for Armenians uh, there are agencies that specialize in certain types um, and, and that's actually part of the problem is because, um, you know, the, the, with the business, the way it is, is they, they want to kind of put you in a category. So especially like for me, I never changed my name. And so my, my name is, it's very ethnic, obviously. So right. uh, it was, especially when I had first started, I was very hard. It was a lot harder for me to get in for roles that were not, not ethnic, you know, um, because, you know, they see your name and they're like, oh, you know, put them in that category. And um, that category, so, uh, are you talking more like, uh, well, I got to tell you, I mean, the roles that you play uh, are m- mostly uh, the bad guys for all the, the, the yeah, terrorists. Exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I mean when I say it's, it's unfortunate because sometimes, uh, unless you build up a certain body of work, which, which I've, I've pretty much done, and it's easier for me to break down those, those roles right now. But, um, you know, especially in the beginning, you're just trying to build credit, so you want to do everything, but... Uh, you know, if you don't have credits and, and you, you know, you're not the guy, unfortunately, with the way the business is, is there aren't too many. I mean, it's changed a little bit, but there aren't too many like redeeming role, like roles with redeeming qualities or like good guy roles, or whatever that are, right. that are, you know, ethnic, especially like in the Middle East, you know, in, in that area, it's like we're all terrorists. We're all, you know, it's, yeah, that, that's it's, sad, uh, too. It's sad. That, that really is sad. Uh, and that's because you think that, uh, you know, maybe I didn't change my name to what they wanted or something like that. To, uh, you think that had some role to do with it as well, or what, what's your thoughts? I'm sure. On that? Yeah, I think name goes a long way, especially when, like, for example, if the casting office isn't really familiar with you, and you know, my, my agent, my manager is trying to pitch me. I mean, they're you know they see my name and automatically with you know it's a kind of a first impression is okay ethnic you know right. so he's not going to be the lead of the show or the lead of the film you know I mean realistically how many shows or, or films or anything have you seen where you know the, the the lead or even the first like three or four leads are you know Armenian or Middle Eastern or you know you know uh, brown. That is a very good point that he's making, Chris. Because you, you guys know, you guys know that one uh, Mexican guy. Uh, uh, I think his first name's Danny, and they always got him like the. the oh, um, well, I just had he's it. he's always that. Preo. Uh, is, is that Dan, his? Yeah, I think yes. Yeah, and uh, every sh- every movie that he's been a part of, he, they've always had him like the villain guy, you know? Yeah, like like like, like in the cartel or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You you know the one I'm talking about, yeah. Haraj? Yeah, D- Danny Trejo. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. The, the, and yeah, when I you know, were saying yeah, they that, they finally gave him. They, yeah. They, they, sorry, they finally did give him a lead when he did that. Um, I forgot what it was called. He did like some like thriller, like a uh, what was it? Um, no, it he's came right. Out about, yeah. like, I want to say three or four years ago, where he like got the kiss like Jessica Alba. That was a big thing. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. It's well, worth the wait. I think it was uh, <laughs> well worth the wait. I'm, then I'm, I'm trying to think of it. It was. Uh, 
God, what was it? I don't know the name. You know of it. what? I'll I actually think, look it yeah, up. yeah, I think uh, you're right on that because I did see some movie like that uh, a couple years back. It was too. So yeah, yeah. So, but but then again, that was you know it was a thing in, independent. It wasn't like a studio backed film, so it was. Um, you know, the studios are a lot more narrow-minded when it comes to casting, you know, that kind of thing. They, they probably wouldn't put him as the lead, you know? Right, you know, so. right. Uh, uh, Chris, you, you got the movie? Machete. Machete. Yeah, yeah he was a, a... Machete, exactly. Yeah, he was a, a former uh, federale. Wow, wow. You had a, you had a question for uh, Haraj, didn't you? Yeah, no, I was just was interested, like, especially on, on you know, on, like, a homeland or, or shows in that realm it like is there anyone who's like you know consistently on set who like is acting as a consultant who's you know f former cia or like has worked in some intelligence capacity special forces or something like that like to consult on the script and and you know how stuff actually happens yes no they're definitely um they well first off like one of the writers on that show was uh he was like ex CIA. One had a sister who was CIA, so she had the the, 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 the female's perspective of it, you know, with with Carrie's character. So um, they all kind of have from their own backgrounds, but also, yeah, they definitely have consultants with not only that stuff, also with like, for example, the Middle Eastern stuff. So you know, when when you see a scene where where Brody, the character of Brody, is like praying, um, you know, on his on his knees, you know, that, that's all been. Uh, they, they've done their research and they have consultants that tell them, okay, this is what he would do if he's really Muslim, this is what he would do, you know, that kind of thing. So they're not just making it up there. They're definitely doing their research. Wow, that, that's, yeah, that's interesting. That's really interesting. How restricted, and, and you know, I don't want to jump in here, but how restricted are is, like, your access to the scripts and stuff? Like, like how long, like, if you're going in to shoot, how long before you shoot do you get access to that script? Because I know with shows like Homeland and with, with Game of Thrones and some of these other huge shows where everyone wants to know not what's going to happen it. happen next. It's everything's held so close to the vest. Even with from from other actors I know who I've had discussions with who were on the show, are like I I I literally have no idea what's going to happen until I show up to shoot. Yeah, I mean that's it's, it's maybe not that accurate, but yeah, it's just basically within a week I would say. And but even then, leading up to the day of the shoot, they are making changes. So um, you know they they just kind of make changes as they go and. You might have um, more lines or less lines or no lines, or they might have cut you out or you know whatever it is. But yeah, it's you know they have an idea of where they're going, but but definitely things change. And uh, you were on um, fifteen episodes on that show, weren't you? I did. Yeah, I did the first two seasons. I'm not on it anymore, but I did the first two seasons. Um, and uh, yeah, it was fun. It was a great time. We shot it in Charlotte, North Carolina, and uh, made some good friends and. Uh, yeah, it was a great time. That's cool. Um, did they kill you? They killed you off on the show, right? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, the thing is, I, I to be honest with you, I wasn't even sure if they, um, <laughs> if they had killed me or not because they, they never <laughs> they never mentioned that they, that I died. They never showed me dying. Um, they just kind of like stopped showing me, which. But then there was that bomb blast, you know. Um, so. I think the assumption is that I was in that building, but, you know, it's never really been talked about. But uh. then again, for a show like that, they're, 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 the creators are really, really smart. So what they like to do is they like to keep their options open. And so, like, uh, oh, I'm not saying I'll be back there or anything, but, but you know, they don't it's open. necessarily like to make definite decisions in case they do want to bring a character back or something no, that, that they haven't shot themselves in the foot. No, that's great. The, then the option's still out there. Now, I was wanting to ask uh, you this, too. When, when they do kill someone off, do they... I mean, do they sit them down uh, before the show or, or uh, during the script time when they're writing it out, or like uh, like in football in the NFL, they put a like a yellow tag on the locker room saying, "Come to the office, we need to talk to you." How do they do it in the <laughs> acting world on these type yeah, of series? Yeah, it is something like that, especially when when you're when you're a part of somewhat a part of the family where you're doing multiple episodes and it's not just a one or two episode kind of thing with those that uh, they probably wouldn't you know you kind of see it coming but with something like with mine you know in fact they actually had planned on, on killing me um earlier than when i did leave so there's there was a an episode where there was like a shootout in a bookstore um or not a bookstore it was like some kind of yeah i think it was a bookstore but either way there's a shootout and um and I get shot, and I was actually supposed to die initially, but then they they kind of changed their minds and they, they decided to keep me around for a little longer. But but for something like that, they actually 
when they had planned on killing me, they, they, the creator called me and, and basically just kind of gave me a heads up, listen, just so you know, you know, this is what's going to happen. And, you know, um, you, we, we love working with you. You've been great, but, you know, whatever. I mean, story comes first in the end. Um, so it was something that they, they felt they had to do at that time. But, yeah, I definitely got a call and was very considerate and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like cold at all. <laughs> that that's that, that is rough, you know. After you've worked with the yeah, yeah. So, do they give you like a week notice or something on this, or a couple of weeks, or how how do they do but basically, that? Basically, yeah, I think it was like as far as I remember, it was like the episode before the actual episode where I was supposed to die. So, yeah, it was a good week, week and a half, something like that. Okay, all right. Well, uh, yeah. that, I I've but, always but they wanted... were really great. I mean, they were super gracious and and they were they were awesome. I mean. In the end, you know, people have to die in shows, you know. So oh, sure, sure. Um, it, it's tough for actors to not take that personally because you think like, oh, what if they didn't like me, or what, what if my acting is no good, or whatever. But you know, I mean, unless you're super difficult, it's usually the case is that uh, they just have to move the story forward and whatever they have to do to to, oh. to make the story go, you know. Harach, it's a it's a real action series too, like with Twenty Four as well. Uh, did Did you guys use any? Uh, I mean, did they use any stuntmen for you guys as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in fact, it's a, it's a rule with the Screen Actors Guild, um, unless you're also a stunt guy, but they, for, for certain things, they, they you need to have a, a stunt guy um, come in. Um, so, yeah, it depends on the scene, of course, but if there's a lot of, like, fighting or falling or that kind of thing, shooting out, you know, um, usually they, they get a stunt guy. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so what, what what's your uh, next game plan? Do you have anything on the works coming up, or are you just laying low right now, looking for a nice script coming around the corner? A little bit of both. Um, I'm auditioning. I'm kind of up for something right now, but I'm also producing a film. Um, I'm producing a feature film that we shoot in December, so that's kind of taking up a lot of my time. We're trying to you know lock down the locations and cast uh, a couple of the names that we're trying to get. So. Yeah, I'm in the process of that right now. It's, it was actually a short film that we did that won a bunch of awards and was really great, and we got the funding to do the feature, so that's keeping me busy at the moment. Well, that's excellent. That's excellent. Hey, that brings me to my next question. Uh, if you had a choice, all right, now I'm just throwing this at you right now. If you had a mm -hmm. choice between, like, a big-time movie or big-time series where you were starring in uh, one of these two, which one would you uh, roll with? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, if you asked me this six years ago, I'd probably say uh, a movie, but the game has changed so much that um, TV is a little more, well, a lot more secure, and it's it's kind of like um, there's a regular paycheck, if that makes sense. And, you know, it is, you know, with a movie, it's like a one and done, and if it flops, it flops, you know what I mean? And, and you kind of go down in value as far as your, your name value goes. But um, probably right now it would be a series, to be honest with you. Okay. Um, and I, I love theater, too. I've done a lot of theater as well, um, which there's things I love about that. But I think in the end, uh, a, a great series would, would trump everything. Well, you know what? I just lost lunch to my uh, <laughs> partner here because... Uh, we we were coming up with the questions and so forth, and I said, you know what? Uh, what do you think he'd say on that one? And he says series. I go actually, kidding? actually, I th think the answer that I gave was if I if I were thinking I was answering for him, I would say, well, if you were asking me the same question f right. five years ago, I would probably have said a movie. But <laughs> now, because of the you know the the, yeah. the grand scale of of so many series and and the popularity that they're that they're getting, I would say series. It was literally almost exactly your answer. Oh. So I'm very proud of myself right now. Hurrah! You should have seen no, a big no, smile no. across the table right now. <laughs> he, I mean, you see, yeah, you see all these big actors, you know, from from film movie actors, and they're doing series right now because the money's just better, you know, yeah. and, and it's more secure. Um, I mean, right now, if I worked on a TV show for a week, I, I'd make more money than if I worked on a movie for a week. What do you think, you know, though? Do you, do you think the movies are down right now? People are not uh, going out watching movies anymore, or what's going on with that? You think Netflix might have hurt this, uh, the movie theater a I little think, bit as well? Yeah, I think it's a combination of that, but also um, what's happening is because technology's gotten so so great and we have these big screen TVs in our homes with surround sound and all that, um, I mean, you know, your whole family could watch a movie for practically nothing. Where, where if you went to the you're theater right. when you have a family of four or five people, you're spending two hundred, uh, you're spending a hundred bucks. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? There's no question uh, about it. Uh, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. which is why they're doing all the extra stuff like the three D and all this IMAX because they're trying to come up with stuff that you don't necessarily have at home. You know, um, I mean, they even have those concepts of like the, the movie theater seats that like shake oh. and make noise and all that stuff. You know. Well, I tell you what, it's just, last week we went to a movie and uh, uh, it was one of these the chairs reclined back. That there was a. A waitress that come uh, that comes in there <clears throat> gets our order for food and everything. It was unbelievable. I I couldn't believe yeah. that they're doing this at a movie theater. You just press a button and they're coming out with uh, chicken strips and so forth. It was it was unbelievable. But uh, yeah, I, no, definitely they're they're just thinking of ways of getting in the theater as opposed to staying home and watching a movie there. You know, um, right, right. And it's smart. You know, they they got to kind of uh, be ahead of the game and and see what else but yeah i think the, the movies are suffering at the theaters at least yeah uh, now yeah. have you done any work in armenia <clears throat> i have not i've never been to armenia I've, I've always wanted to go but um haven't had the opportunity i've been asked to do stuff there that kind of fell through that nothing's ever really stuck um i've been asked to do a lot of stuff for like armenian here like like u.s armenia like tv series and stuff like that but um to be honest with you it's not it's not really my cup of tea and 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 the, the the money is is just not there for me right to to do you know um, I I tell you what the, uh, it, it's 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 good uh, one one day one uh, an opportunity pops up though I I think that uh, maybe down the line you might be interested in something like that but right now it seems like you, you really want to get some sort of real good foundation going in L A what's this uh uh the the script that you're producing now is it uh, action type of basis or uh, what's that one about no it's actually a um it's like a dark comedy so it's uh you know it's like a slice of life film but it's basically about um this guy who his dream has always been to be like a dancer you know and uh he does dance competitions in his hometown rancho cucamonga um which is like you know middle nowhere but he uh basically it's a dance competition between him and his brother and uh, an opposing team, which is two brothers. And I'm, I'm one of the guys in the opposing team, which are the Prussian brothers. You know, they're like these Russian guys. And, um, it, it's true. It's really fun and, and it's funny, but it's, it's all played for real. And it's, uh, the, the thing is they take it so seriously, but they're just not good dancers. And that's kind of where the comedy is because they're just not good, but that's their passion, you know? Right, um, right. It's, it sounds so, good because I, I keep seeing two guys that can't really dance and they think they could dance. Right. Yeah, totally. And, and you know, maybe in Rancho Cucamonga, like, they can kind of hang, but if they were to come out to, like, L.A. or New York or something, they, they would just be a, a joke, you know what I mean? Right, right, and, right. <laughs> um, but they just, like, that's their dream, you know, and it's just sad. They would uh, probably... Yeah, it is funny. They would probably be stars in the Midwest here. We would think that's probably good dancing, so... <laughs> in, <Yeah>. in any <laughs> case, uh, I tell you what, Harach, you got to come back on and let us know when... Uh, this is going to be out, and uh, we'd love to have our people know about it and uh, go out to. Uh, what What do you think? It's going to be some sort of festivals or uh, 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 special yeah, screenings? Yeah, definitely. It'll definitely be in uh, festivals all around. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean the, the the short film did really well, and and that's why we're doing this. So it'll definitely be around, and I'll, I'll keep you guys posted for sure. Oh, definitely. Thank you very much, man. It, it's been great having you on our show, and uh, Chris has still got a. A goofy smile about what you were going to say. I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. So I, I, I owe him lunch on that one. But uh, Harach, uh, have you ever thought about um, maybe getting into the theater? I mean, you you brought that up. Uh, how how serious were you about uh, doing the theater work and so forth, like as uh, plays and so forth? Or have you been involved in anything like that? Yeah, I have. You know, I, I actually used to own a theater in Hollywood. Um, I ran that for six years, and I did a lot of plays there. But I got involved with a with a great production called Bengal Tiger at the Baghdad Zoo. Wow! Um, that we that we did at the at the Kirk Douglas Theater here in L.A. And then a year later, it went to the Mark Taper Forum, which was like double the size uh, in L.A. as well. And then a year after that, they moved us to to Broadway. So I did that for six months on Broadway and. And they, they cast Robin Williams as as one of the leads. So, Robin um, Williams. Yeah, I got to be on stage. Yeah, I got to be on stage every day with with Robin Williams. Uh, it was great. How was he, man? I mean, uh, we knew that he was uh, battling depression and all that. Were there any signs that you seen him uh, sitting alone or anything like that uh, that you thought, you know what, the guy, the guy don't, you know, he he's he's depressed or anything like that? Did he give um, anything off? Is what I'm saying. 
Yes, yes and no. I mean, the first day, you know, when we first met him in rehearsals, you know, he was always on. He was like the Robin Williams that we see in, in, in interviews, and he's always like, you know, jumping making around jokes and, and being yeah. funny. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then, you know, the second day was a little less of that. Third day. So by the fourth day, he was just the Robin Williams that, that I got to know. So he was, you know, super um, kind of, not to himself, but he was very quiet, um, soft-spoken, really sensitive guy. And, and when we would have a real conversation, it would just be... Um, very sincere, you know, um, none of those uh, added jokes or nothing like that. So, um, but as far as can I sense if he was depressed, I mean, I, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have been past me, you know, like I would have believed it, but it wasn't like I pointed out and said, oh my God, that guy's got issues. No, it wasn't like that at all. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, he's definitely, a, he, was a, he was a different person than, than the guy we saw in interviews, that's for sure. Now, going back to your, um, uh, experience doing this as well. I got to ask you, I've asked the, my past guest on this one, do you, uh, how do you, how do you rate doing that type of live work instead of uh, the series or movies and so forth? Uh, is it up there? Is it below that? Or, or how, how do you it, feel with that it, one? You know, in certain aspects, I, I think it's, it's better because you get that initial audience reaction, you know, and whether it's a laugh or it's, you know, you, you can sense the quiet in the room and it's a dramatic or whatever it is. It's There's no feeling like that. You don't get that in TV or film. But the the, one, the thing I don't like about theater is is the repetition aspect because, you know, you're doing a show for, you know, eight, eight times same a week. Same thing. Months. Yeah, it's like Groundhog it's, it's Day. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's like the same lines over and over. I mean, there, there were points where I'm, you know, on stage in front of 1,400 people and I'm saying my lines, and I'm thinking about what I'm going to do afterwards, what I'm going to have for lunch tomorrow. I'm like almost on autopilot, and right. it's, it's a terrible place to be. But it's like you know, it's just a repetition kind of. It, it does that to you. So, so that that's the part I don't like about it. Well, then but there's other than that, I love being on stage. There's got to be an aspect of that too. That one night you're just like, you know what, this part that I normally do like this, I'm going to throw a little twist and. A little bit more enthusiasm when I do this, or did that ever pop up too? Yeah, definitely. We always thought of like new ways to kind of make it fresh and make it different. And I mean, it got to a while too where we even like make like inside jokes. Like on stage, we would like kind of like you know when our faces weren't facing the audience, we'd make a face at the other actor, kind of goof around in our own way without without making it noticeable to right, the audience. Right, right. So you just kind of have to, otherwise, you know, you just go crazy. Right. Uh, we, <laughs> I appreciate you being on our show, Harach, and uh, let us know if there's anything we could do for you. We're here for you, my man. Of course. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your time, and thanks for having me. Thanks, All right. man. Take care, Harach. Wow, what a great show again. Man, great guest. Guy. Yeah, you can't go wrong with all these great guests yeah. we're having. And I love all the stuff he's been in, so that's even better. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? I got I got our old buddy here who's been on our show here, uh, Roger Capellian. Yeah. Roger, how are you? I am doing great, and I'm really happy to be back on. How are you guys doing? Not bad at Wonderful. all. Wonderful. Wow, I didn't know Roger was going to be on. This yeah. is great. It's a little surprise. Hey, uh, Roger. Yeah, for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Roger, yeah. I heard that we got, we're got we going to have a contest here. I, it's about time we had a good contest here, too, and what I like to do is have you explain to our people out there, our Armenian Yechpires and our Kurdiks out there, to let them know about what we got going. Fill us in on it. it yeah, um, I think I think our people need a good contest right now. I think we're in dire need. So uh, let's do this. Uh, well, um, you know, I did the first graphic novel, which is pretty much, as you know, it's like a, pretty much a comic book, but a serious one about Armenian history, right. war gods. Sure. And, you know. Excellent book, by well. the way. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I worked really hard at it um, with my team. So, and, you know, I'm doing the second book, which is uh, Warrior Saints, which takes place 150 years later, dealing with uh, the Vartan battle against uh, the Persians. Right. The first book obviously dealt with the uh, Christianization of Armenia, King Durta, you know, and the Gregory the Illuminator. So... What I'm doing is, I thought, you know, uh, we talked about doing a cool contest where I'm doing a hundred different covers, unique, separate covers for the second book, right. because it's a way to raise money. Now, you know, I'm charging 150 bucks for each unique collector's edition of the second book. And once they're gone, they're gone. I'm not going to do any more of those. Mm-hmm. And then what will happen is the um, 
you know, we'll vote on the best cover, and that's going to end up being the cover, right, of, of the, the the mass printing of the second book. And we're going to be doing a Kickstarter um, pretty soon. The reason uh, we're doing a contest is I think it would be a cool idea if some of your listeners, I'm sure, have traveled to Armenia, to travel to Western Armenia, which is Turkey, occupied Armenia, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> and um, they could uh, they have some really cool photos that they've taken, and those are historic or landscape photos, you know, of, of, of uh, you know, the deals pretty much with the environment where, you know, my stories take place. I'd love to use those images, and we can do a contest where two people win, um, I use their photos that they've taken, and they give us permission, and I can use those to create a cool, like, battle scene or, you know, like a castle scene or something from Armenian history using the photos they took. And um, the winners get uh, the, uh, you know, a copy of the first volume, War Gods. And uh, I use their image as, uh, you know, on the cover of the second one. So Do they... two, of the win- two of the... Do they some, do they somewhere get a credit in the back that the it was their picture or something like that or absolutely how absolutely. cool is they that guys in the that back, is really cool you know they get on Facebook you know we use their photo like here's a uh, person who took this photo they, it just has to be their photo they have to have taken it they have full rights to it okay we can't use someone else's photo and it can't be something off Google it's got to be their photo and it's got to be high enough resolution that I can create a cool image from it and uh, you know you. Stuff and, I do, like Lord of the Rings and stuff right. like that. So that's the kind of thing we're going to do, but with Armenian history. And it's probably not the type of picture that, uh, hey, guys, it's not. I don't think it's a selfie where the background is a mountain and uh, your your big face is right in front of it too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's right. not going to work either. It, no. it, you want just, uh, just a landscape picture, something like that. Uh, you really would rather have not people in it, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's just a landscape picture. The people in it are very small. It's mostly landscape. Wow. Uh, sometimes people shoot cool panoramics. Uh, it has to be a pretty high resolution, you know, kind of like a larger image, like the kind you take with one of the newer iPhones, that kind of thing, or a good camera, well, digital this, camera. This is really ideal for people that are in Armenia because uh, if you're in America or Argentina or uh, other places. I guess it. Uh, I guess we're kind of out of luck on this one, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, but let's let's put it this way. What if they took a photo and it kind of looks like something? Okay. You know, that that would appear in Armenia. Fine, you know. Wow. I mean, you win. We choose your image. You win a book, and I get to put it on one of the covers, a special covers. Now, you don't get that special cover. Uh, maybe you can have one of your friends buy it. But, right. you know, those special cover issues are going to help me publish my next book. And this is what we're doing. This is a grassroots. Thing. And your name's you know, going to be in it. It's unbelievable. In the be back. In it. Yeah. How course. could you your go? Your going to be in it. How yeah. could you go wrong? Your name's yeah, in this you book. Get, you get, yeah. And you get a. And an artist that uh, did the right. Lord of the Rings, uh, you know, uh, Mordor, uh, you know, the original one, uh, gets to use your image to create a cool historic awesome landscape that probably has a battle scene in it or a Vartan on the cover or something you know it'll be really a lot of fun and, and obviously we reserve the right to choose the one that actually fits the best and it's a contest after all you know? this contest this contest i think you're making us the exclusive on this contest absolutely oh nowhere my else God. Just how, guys. Yeah, this is a good go this is happening right away and it leads up to the um uh, Kickstarter that we're going to be starting hopefully by the end of this month uh, to get the book published and people can get all sorts of really exclusive things. Okay, uh, you know, I mean, John, this is the new way to do things. Honestly. Okay, um, you know, because yeah. And uh, here's here's my next question: How do the people uh, enter their picture? What what do they have to do? Um, I think they could probably just post it on uh, your site. Um, Our and site. Just go back and look. Yeah, or on possibly your, your show. Or possibly even your site on your your yeah. site as well. Both sites are available, and uh, and then we'll just put them all together and uh, have Roger Kupelian pick out the one that he says, or pick out two. We got two books yeah, two. that will be given out with his uh, signature inside of each book and your name inside of a credit. 
on this next book coming out. I, I you know what? This is yeah. great, my friends. This is great, and the, thank you, Roger, for getting us the opportunity to even be a part of this contest. That that's excellent. Oh, look, only for you, man. Only for you. <laughs> I'm not doing it anywhere I love, else. I love Exclusive it. Exclusive to you. You've got a great show. Everyone that's on it loves it. They love what you guys are doing over there. Uh, we just want to support it and uh, well, get the word out. I I appreciate it so much. And my friends out there listening, hey, you guys got to do this. This is great. If you now, I even you see how I even maneuvered this as a good Armenian here. I do. Uh, the way I made this happen, it was all for just uh, the Armenians out there and. Uh, People in the Armenia, Armenian descent in Turkey. But now I made it to where everybody can have a beautiful landscape picture that Roger will say, you know what? That could be Armenian. Why not? That could be a battle scene. So, Absolutely. again, no selfies with a mountain behind you and, and uh, no people running around either. This is going to be a nice landscape picture that you could visualize yourself as, you know what? This would, this would have been a hell of a battle scene right here. So that's... That's yeah. the main thing that we're shooting for. Roger, we're going to get the word out on this. We're going to get it out, my friend. Yes, we are. Thank you. Thank you. Let me let me paraphrase Vartan here, Vartan Lamagonian. Do it. Bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> Bring it on. Hopefully, Bring it on. <laughs> hopefully we'll have uh, better results than uh, Vartan did. Uh, he went down in flames, on, but he fought like a true champ, you know. That was our guy. Oh, man, he went down like a warrior, man. He, he went down he like did. a warrior. I checked out his yeah. book. I checked out his book, Chris. It was unbelievable. Oh, That's yeah. uh, it was yep. it makes you proud to be an Armenian and for him to come out with another edition like this with all the it's it's going to be fantastic and for us to have the opportunity for this contest, I'm telling you right now, I am really excited about it. Roger, we'll let you know how it comes along, along you know. We can't wait. All right, man. All I'm right. looking forward to it. Let's see those pictures. Take care, brother. Hey, you guys out, heard it out there. Let's get these pictures sent to wh – where can they go to your site as well? Yeah, they can go to my site and go to your site. What, what's what's your site there. called uh, again? Uh, it's on Facebook. It's East of Byzantium. East of Byzantium. Okay. All right. Yeah, the East of Byzantium book, and, and they can find it if they do a search. East of Byzantium, they'll see, and it'll be the one specifically for the book. They'll see all the art from the graphic novel and stuff on there. They can check it out. Uh, they can order books, which helps us publish, obviously. Um, but uh, once the Kickstarter begins, those special covers are going to go very quickly. So okay. um, we've got less than like 40 left, so they better hurry. All right. Sounds great. All right, Roger, take care, and we'll be in touch. What a great interview here with Hurach and then followed up with Roger's exclusive contest that we are having here on this show. How well, great is that, Chris? Man, how lucky are we and all our listeners? Honestly, honestly. And uh, this is only on this show, and you could go on the Roger site and leave a picture there, and uh, you could go on our site, A Toast to Armenia, and leave a big picture of a, some landscape in Armenia or anywhere in this world. All landscapes are considered. You're right. And without any faces on it, though, okay, that's that's the thing about it. It's got to be pure landscape picture. And remember, you have to, it has to be your photograph. You have to have the rights. You yeah, know, don't not, be stealing anyone's Images. picture here, yeah. my friend. That's not how it works. That's not how we're working it here. Anyway, we ran a little too late for Mariam. We'll get Mariam's recipe for next week. And uh, my friends, Kishir Party, Genatsad Hayer, we will be with you next week. Tune in next week for another episode of Genatsad Hayer, a toast to Armenia with Jano Kabinjian. You can find the show online at www.armeniaproud.com or download and subscribe on iTunes or Stitcher for Android. This is the Ignotainment Media Network.